Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is here in Washington. He's hosting a closed-door meet-and-greet and a policy discussion with a number of fellow Republican lawmakers, or as old colleagues in attendance. CBS News political reporter Aaron Navarro joins us now. He is in Washington, just outside where that event is being held. I see some security behind you, Aaron, and possibly some protests. Um, so DeSantis is already making waves on his return back to uh, his old turf. Um, who's attending this event, and what does it say about what DeSantis is trying to do in terms of gaining support in the party? Hi, Caitlin. Thanks for having me. Yeah, there are some protests here at what is billed as a meet and greet and policy discussion with Governor DeSantis and several members of uh, the Congress, Republican members that he has invited. I've already seen um, some folks from Iowa, Randy Feenstra, attending this, as well as a congressman that has backed him, Thomas Massey. Now, the backdrop of all of this is that there are several Florida Congress members that have backed Trump over DeSantis for 2024. And DeSantis is not declared yet, but you've had at least six uh, folks in his own home state backing Trump instead of him. Laurel Lee, uh, the former Secretary of State under him, did back DeSantis. But this all comes as some congressional Republicans are showing that they are leaning towards Trump over DeSantis. Now, in terms of this event, he's expected to talk about his, quote, Florida blueprint and how that applies to the country potentially. But what I've been told is this is just a chance for other House Republicans to see DeSantis, to see DeSantis and kind of size him up a little bit and get to know him more. Yeah, I mean, Aaron, we just played or we just showed some of those in attendance and the endorsements that you mentioned. And Donald Trump obviously unrolling endorsements from Florida as a way to kind of stick it to DeSantis. Um, DeSantis has been in the news a lot lately, obviously, but made some more news in Florida. He had a press conference and he essentially said that he wants to maybe build a prison next to Disney World. This is you know, part of his ongoing battle with the company. Can you just kind of walk us through what this battle is all about? Why is he... Uh, doing this with Disney. Right. Well, it begins with Disney's public opposition to the Parental Rights and Education Bill, which specifically prohibits education about sexual orientation and gender identity before the third grade. Disney's CEO then publicly opposed it. DeSantis's legislature looked at tweaking some of Disney's uh, special privileges and advantages from having essentially their own governance in the district. They eventually landed on replacing the board that oversees this district with all DeSantis appointees. But Disney, before this uh, legislation full, was fully enacted, Disney transferred, uh, essentially got that board uh, to transfer all of the power to Disney when it comes to development on those grounds. And really, it's DeSantis uh, saying Disney has reopened this fight, you know, and he has said that there's going to be legislation in Florida to uh, potentially nullify this kind of last minute agreement that Disney made. But he's also said, uh, you know, taxes, tolls on the roads are a possibility. And as you mentioned, looking at the land adjacent to Disney, he said it could be used for a state park. Some people say it could be used for an amusement park. And he said one person suggested to him that it should be used as a private prison. So it's a sign that this battle is really not going away between DeSantis and the corporation. Yeah, and it's kind of creating a wedge between himself and some others in the Republican Party. You have had Mike Pence be very critical of those moves. Also, Chris Christie today at a event this morning hosted by Semaphore's editor-at-large, Steve Clemens. Um, let's take a listen to what he had to say about DeSantis's moves. And I believe as a conservative, the job of government is in the main to stay out of the business of business. Like, I don't think we should be heavily regulating business. I don't think we should be telling business what to do, what to say, how to think. And I believe that's what conservatives have believed for as long as I've been alive. I don't think Ron DeSantis is a conservative based on his actions towards Disney. Just quickly, Aaron, what does this tell you? Well, it tells me that there are more Republicans squeamish about this conflict between DeSantis and Disney. Larry Hogan, the former governor of Maryland, former Vice President Mike Pence, and even former President Trump uh, this morning uh, said that DeSantis has botched uh, this battle, and it shows that they are willing to criticize what could potentially be Trump's biggest primary challenger. All right, we will stay tuned. Aaron Navarro, I know you've been covering DeSantis on his book tour and back here in Washington. Thank you for joining us and for speaking over all of that crowd behind you. Great work there.